Hello, I'm Johnny Ball, and if you've opened up a Thomas Salter electronics kit, well, you've just taken the lid off the astonishing world of electronics. In the last hundred years, the world has changed totally to become an electronic wonderland, and electricity is now something we could scarcely live without. But how does it all work? Well, switching a switch is a mechanical action, but the science of electronics deals with the controlling of electricity by electrical means. Today, our radio and TVs, our hi-fi equipment and video and tape recorders, washing machines and automatic ovens, fridges and fridge freezers, calculators and our computers. With all of them, you switch on a switch to complete a circuit to allow electrical power to flow. And after that, everything is handled electronically. And this kit will have you building and operating electronic circuits from the very first time you use it. On the other side of this tape, I talk about the fascinating history of electricity. But here, the mysteries of electronics will be explained in the most simple and practical way. And in a very short time, you will be one of the comparatively few people who actually understand how electronic circuits work. Now, don't expect to understand everything right at the beginning. It might take a little time. But at this very moment, you can build every one of the circuits laid out in your manual. Hang on, don't rush. Work through the circuits gradually and in the right order and you get to understand it all that much better, OK? First of all, let me explain just what your kit contains. To begin with, there is a baseboard which contains all your electrical components and a series of numbered terminals. Each terminal has a spring connector which easily bends over so that a connecting wire will be gripped when the spring is released. Now don't pull these springs, just bend them sideways, connect a wire and let go. Right? Right. In the top right hand corner of your baseboard there is a place for your battery. You will need a one and a half volt battery and your board may also have a place for a small nine volt battery as well. Unfortunately, Thomas Salter Limited couldn't include the batteries as they will deteriorate if left in storage for too long. For the same reason, always disconnect the batteries before you pack the set away. And this is very important. Never ever try to connect this kit to the mains electricity or to any electrical equipment that uses main supply, even if the equipment is unplugged. OK? Your batteries will provide all the power you need for your electrical circuits and they'll always be perfectly safe. So safe, in fact, that in some cases, the lie detector, for instance, you will become part of the electrical circuit yourself. Look at your baseboard. You'll probably recognise the names of some of the components in your kit, although you may never have actually seen them before. However, some of the names might be completely new to you. Don't worry, you'll soon understand them all. For instance, what's a capacitor, you may ask? Well, a capacitor contains two metal plates that are insulated from each other. The result is that if a direct electric current arrives at a capacitor, it will be blocked and not allowed to get through. On the other hand, alternating current is current which flows first one way and then the other, alternately. When alternating or AC current arrives at a capacitor, it is stored very briefly on one of the metal plates and then allowed to flow back the way it came. So alternating current can flow in circuits which contain capacitors. Then there are resistors. Resistors act a bit like lane closures on a motorway. They only allow a certain controlled amount of electrical current to get through. The rest of the traffic goes to the capacitor where it is returned. Resistors control the amount of current in a particular part of a circuit because circuits need different amounts of current in different places. For instance, in transistors. Now a transistor, well that's a bit like a busy main road full of traffic. Imagine there's a tiny side street that's blocked up. If one car wants to turn into the side street but can't, it'll block the whole main road and stop all the traffic. Now a transistor operates when a tiny amount of electricity opens the side street and removes the blockage. Immediately, this tiny electric current allows a huge electric current, all the main road traffic, to flow. But the side street control can stop the traffic or let it flow any time it wants to. That's the transistor. Another controller of electrical current is the transformer. This contains two coils of wire, one smaller than the other. These coils are not connected to each other, but they are wrapped around the same iron core. 
when AC, or alternating current, flows through one coil, it makes the iron core magnetic, and the magnetic field, in turn, starts an electric current to flow in the second coil of wire. Because the two coils in the transformer are of a different size, the electrical output from the transformer is different from the input, but the two electrical forces are always in the same proportion to each other. So, by increasing the input to a transformer, you increase the output in a controlled way, as you will see, or rather hear, when you make the police siren. You'll find the instructions for that experiment in the manual. Do read the manual and try to read all of it, not just the list of connections that you have to make. For instance, in the first experiment, you'll see how to make a Morse code oscillator. Connecting up the terminals according to the instructions should take, what, well, just a few minutes. I'll tell you what, why don't you switch me off? Connect up and then turn me on again. OK? Well, go on then. Go on, have a go. Hello, you back again? Oh, good. How did you get on with your Morse code circuit? See how easy the connecting instructions are? As the manual points out, when you've connected up by following the instructions and the connecting diagram, then check everything with the circuit diagram. This is important because once you understand circuit diagrams, you'll be able to understand everything about electrical currents. OK, now how are you getting on with your Morse code? Why not try to become proficient in Morse tapping? Try sending the message, The time has come for all good men to come to the aid of the party. That message contains mostly common letters and is quite easy to transmit fast with some practice. A much harder message is Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs, which uses every letter of the alphabet, yet only uses 32 letters in all. It's amazing how proficient you can get at sending Morse code messages. The highest recorded speed is 175 symbols a minute, which is almost three letters every second. And the record hasn't been broken since 1942. Of course, Morse can be sent by mechanical and electronic means, and the record for receiving and translating Morse is an incredible 75.2 words in a minute, which works out at over 17 letters a second. That record goes back to 1939. Perhaps you can spend some time learning the code, so that you can listen in to shortwave radio and translate the messages. Some people say that Morse can drive you dotty, but it hasn't affected me yet. <laughs> oh, dash. You know Samuel Morse invented the Morse code. That was about 150 years ago in America. The world's first commercial electric telegraph, however, was set up in 1838 along the Great Western Railway between West Drayton and Paddington, London. By 1894, the line had been extended, and on New Year's Day, 1895, a murderer eluded the police by jumping on a train for London at Slough Station, some 20 miles away. He would have made good his escape, but for the telegraph, which ensured that the police were waiting for him at the other end. Now, you may not catch any murderers with your electronics kit, but the police siren would frighten them away. Or you could protect your home to a certain extent when you complete Oscillator Program 6, the burglar alarm. You may not be allowed to set the alarm up on the front door, but you could rig it up on the electronics kit box itself. You may have to do this because if you have any brothers or sisters or friends around, they're sure to start sniffing around wanting a session with your kit. But why not? There are so many things to make over and over again. And it's all so simple. Just connect up. In fact, if I shut up, you could get on with something right now. Hey, what a good idea. I think I'll have a go with my son's kit. Now, where did they put it? Ah, here it is. Open the box. Oh, heck, they set the alarm. Oh, cheerio. I hope electronics turns you on. Bye. <laughs>